Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, Nigeria's Yemi Alade. She's a singer, songwriter, UNDP, Goodwill ambassador, and the woman and the artist who has brought back live music to the stream for the first time in this year. Yemi Alade, welcome and thank you for bringing the music back to the stream. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Femi. There are going to be so many people, there are millions of people who know your music, love your music, know all about you, and then there will be some who are meeting you for the first yes. time. I've seen you perform on stage and you don't do an introduction. You just come on stage and start singing. Mm -hmm. But for our international audience, what do they need to know about you? Uh, first of all, I just, just see me as your sister, first of all, because I'm always mm. singing about the things that happened to me in my life. And to be sincere, it's mostly about men. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that we all have it's that experience. Theme going on. Exactly. So I'm the girl from Africa who loves to sing about her life experiences. I'm a musician, a songwriter, performer. I love the stage because that's literally like my playhouse. Mm -hmm. You should see me someday. If you would like to speak to Yemi Alade, you can. If you're on YouTube right now, the comment section is open. It is live. Drop your comment into the comment section. I will do my very best to get your comment, your YouTube question to Yemi Alade. Yemi, I'm going to start with your family because I'm trying to work out what kind of kids you were. Mm. Uh, recently, your mom celebrated a big birthday, yeah. so that was important. Yeah. I am seeing your siblings oh, here. Wow. The Which were you? Were you the naughty one? Were you the good one? Were you the playful one? Which which one were you? I think I was blessed to be a bit of everything. I had mm. so much energy, and my parents realized that I, they had to put me, make sure that I, I was part of every extracurricular activity in school. I was a gymnast. I was a dancer. I was I was acting. I was singing. I was a ballerina. I was a queen ballerina in school. I also was part of the jet club because my dad is a mathematician. I was that kind of kid, energy bunny. So I did everything in school and my books too. How did you work out which of these many skills that you had was, was the one you were going to land on? My sister, that troubled me for a long time. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say troubled because I enjoyed it because even up onto university, I still wanted to be everything. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't very sure what I wanted to be until I won a talent show. And then music called me yeah. and, and I answered wholeheartedly. I love that you say you won a talent show, then music called you, but then there was a, a gap between the talent show and people just going, whoa, mm -hmm. Yemi Alade, mm -hmm. and then a huge hit. Mm -hmm. So what did you do in those five years? Were you, were you thinking, oh, I need to do something else? Music is going to be the only thing I'm going to do. What happened in that time? Look, winning a talent show is always a, a beautiful thing because it's like everybody loves and understands your music, but then real life hits. I wasn't sure what kind of artist I wanted to be, so I had to take those five years to engage in artist development, which has to do with a lot of recording music, deciding what audience I want to appeal to, the team I want to build. And eventually, as I walked my way through life, I found the song Johnny after 10 songs. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show people, I'm not going to play Johnny. Why? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to play it, but I'm just going to show a little bit, okay? So here on my laptop, mm -hmm. tell the story of Johnny because this song is going to, it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But tell the, tell the story of Johnny. I think if the guys stop cheating, then maybe the story will stop. But for now, please keep cheating. No, don't cheat. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, the, song, the song is actually a, a personal song. It's something yeah. that happened in my actual life. Um, I wrote a song about experience. I was in a relationship with someone that didn't quite go well mm -hmm. because there were a lot of other people in the relationship. So that didn't really go well. Yeah. But guess what? He blessed me with my first song because I sang about my experience. And a lot of people out there seem to be in the same shoes. So It, it resonates. Exactly. Beyond Nigeria. Yes. Beyond the, the African world. continent. Uh, a couple of questions about Johnny. Let me just show you here on my laptop. Economic advisor says, ask Yemi if she ever found Johnny. <sighs> if you were at my concert at DC, you would see that I was really looking for Johnny and I still didn't find him. I still didn't find him. Um, I haven't found him. And I think he should just keep running for his own good. Mm -hmm. Eunice on, you, on, on Twitter says, wants to know about your favorite part of the industry for you. What do you love about the industry? The thing that I love the most about the music industry is that I'm able to just walk into a little studio 
sing and write my stories, my experiences, mm -hmm. and share with the entire world. And from the industry, the entire world can receive the music. They yeah. can feel my pain, understand my joy. They can vibe with me. I'm able to touch the lives of so many people with my music. Um, and the industry gives us that support. You know? So that is one thing I love, the opportunity to literally live out my dreams in this one life that I have. I promised our viewers on YouTube that they could ask you questions, they're coming in. Uh -huh. Precious wants to know, what inspires you to write a song? When do you know you've got a song in your head percolating? Yo, um, sometimes I, I wake up with a song on my lips. Sometimes mm -hmm. I just hear an instrumental and I just start to sing. I always tell my mm -hmm. producers, the minute you're playing music, just make sure my mic is connected because I have a story to tell. I always have a story to tell. And I'm happy to have people that want to listen. You know? The last time you woke with a song on your lips, what was that song? Ha, huh, my sister, it was... Um, early 2020, um, wow. a song is called Poverty. And to be sincere, the entire music industry was out of a job yeah, yeah. For, globally. And the song is about, I know I won't see poverty for my life, ra ra You know, we, I was going into my savings to you know, make, make ends meet. And I was, it really shocked the entire world. But most of all, I'm very grateful that I'm one of the few people that save. Mm. And I was able to you know, make hay while the sun was shining and even when the sun went down. But I felt the pain of so many, and those close to me and people that I don't even know, and that song came to me. I really don't pray for poverty for anybody, and I was just praying it out there. I don't want to see this thing called poverty. I don't like Mr. P at all, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You gave us just a little hint of your beautiful voice. You were going to perform two numbers for us. Yes. Tell us about the first one, because then I'm going to send you to go and get ready with your band. Um, this song is called Shekere. My first performance is to a song called Shekere, and it features the beautiful, amazing Grammy winner, Anjali Kijo. I call her my music mommy. Mm -hmm. It's a song that was recorded in um, Paris and in Lagos, and also the video was shot in New York and Kenya, Nairobi. Ah, you're going to take us around the world. All I right, will. Yemi, go get ready with your yes. band, and then I will tell you, audience, if you've never been to a Yemi Alade concert, uh, we're going to recreate it for you right here on the stream. But on Saturday, Yemi was playing on the Empress USA tour in Washington, D.C. Here's a little taste, and then she'll play live for you right here on the stream. Have a look.
Yemi Alade performing live here on the stream with Shakere. I know you're enjoying that, watching wherever you are, watching around the world. In 2020, the UNDP reached out to Yemi and asked her if they, she would be a goodwill ambassador. This is how the announcement was made. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Nigerian superstar Yemi Alade as the newest Goodwill Ambassador of the United Nations Development Programme. An accomplished singer, songwriter, actress and activist, Yemi needs no introduction to her 17 million followers on social media. Yemi joins the United Nations family at a critical time. COVID-19 has widened the gap between the rich and the poor. And I look forward to lending my voice to those who are suffering the most from the social economic impact of COVID-19. I'm ready to pull up my sleeves and work hard hand in hand with UNDP to ensure a green and equitable recovery for all. It's the only way we can recover better and stronger. It's the only way we can achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. And I'm super, super ready to give my all, my voice to the course and the mission of the UNDP. So much reaction on YouTube. Keep the comments, questions coming. Yemi, this is Manny. What is it like to be a woman, an activist and a celebrity? We just learned there that you are UNDP Goodwill Ambassador now. So having all of those, those responsibilities wrapped up together, how do you manage that? How do you decide what am I going to support, what am I not going to support? Um, I think being a woman, an artist and an activist, philanthropist, blah, 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 even though these are just terms, first of all, I'm a woman. And I think every woman in our own little way or big way find themselves advocating for other people's peace of mind or advocating for other people's... Um, we're mostly very selfless, that's my point. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, what I choose to support and what I choose to not support, yeah. I like to go with my conscience, and most times I, I like to wear the shoes of the person in the situation. Um, I feel like most times people find themselves in situations that are beyond them, and where I see my voice can assist, I always lend my voice, because sometimes all you need is just someone to echo what your desires and your, your struggles are. What I see now are a lot of celebrities who feel it's part of their portfolio mm -hmm. to include a cause. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to include this cause, I have mm -hmm. to be, wear, you know, wear the ribbon, mm -hmm. wear the badge. Mm -hmm. What makes what you're doing different? I think even before the badge, it, it was a calling for me. Mm -hmm. uh, finding a way to always help the people in my immediate environment. I, I come from a family that, um, I don't come, uh, my family isn't a, the, the rich family. I wasn't brought up with a silver spoon. So I, I have seen the ups and downs of life and I know what it feels to be down there. And I know that when you are able to have someone in your corner fighting for you, whether physically or just by sharing the news about the plight you might be facing at that point in time, it's literally almost mm. a problem solved. You're living um, COVID vaccine inequity. You're, you're experiencing that in mm -hmm. Nigeria. That's yes. one of the causes that you are out there speaking very boldly about. Tell me how that connects with your life and how you speaking out makes a difference. You know, I would say that um, 2020 was a different year for every one of us. Um, all fields of work, everybody was impacted by the adverse effects of COVID-19. And to be sincere, I think... Um, it's important to share the news about what's really happening. For instance, I had some talks with uh, a doctor who actually play, um, represents Africa in the COVID-19 world, where he, he had to try and debunk some myths about the vaccine. Mm. Some people believe that the vaccine comes with a chip. <laughs> yeah. So many funny things. So your government can track you. You know, so oh, it, exactly. This is not true. This, this is not, not true. true. This is not right. true. Right. And some people go, go all the way to, you know, try and make sure that they make you believe that that is the truth, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think the more people come out to say the truth about, um, to say, to actually verify and say the, the, the pros and cons of the vaccine, the better for every one of us. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the um, programs that you're helping. I've just got it here on my on my laptop. It's the myth or vax. And then exactly. it's a little quiz. Yes. You can play at home. Yes. Or even at work. It's on TikTok. Um, and it's on TikTok mm -hmm. as well. 
and you can go through. Yes. Uh, for instance, there's no evidence of African immunity to COVID-19. Myth or vax, Miss Alade? There is no evidence of African immunity mm -hmm. to COVID. Of course, that is that is um, the truth. There is no evidence. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Yemi knows all the answers, you may not, so you'll find that on TikTok. Um, I, w I want to ask you this question, and this is coming from TikTok. Yeah. Uh, TikTok, uh, from, wow. Uh, no, excuse me, uh, from Twitter. Uh, okay. And this is from, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, it's going to be a little hard to get it from okay. TikTok. Uh, Abdul wants to know, how can you empower Nigerian women based on your life experiences? And that word empower is so powerful, and I'm wondering how you, being a creative person, helps another Nigerian woman, another woman, mm -hmm. have more power? Um, my dear sister Femi, I know that there is power in representation. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that both of us are here right now and people are watching us. Knowing, the girl at home right now watching us believes that her dreams are valid just by seeing you, your beautiful African attire, your hair, just exactly as you look. I feel like my music and what I stand for has empowered a lot of females around the world. Everywhere I travel to, there's a lady, you know, she, she's shaking with nerves and she's telling me how when she listens to my music, she feels stronger. She feels like she can do everything she wants to do. Um, but besides the music, um, I have an NGO which is about trying, which focuses on trying to help people to reach their best and, and, and their, their most um, potential. Recently, we gave out a certain amount of money to about um, 10 females, mm -hmm. and the focus was female entrepreneurship. Because I believe that if you educate or empower a woman, you've educated an entire generation, mm -hmm. Women are always in the position to, to help build the family. We're builders, we're growers, we're multipliers. And that is why I like to focus on the female. And that is how I do my thing. Mm -hmm. Samuel William is a big fan of yours. Oh. And Samuel has a video question for you. Okay. Here's Samuel. All right. As a fan, I can't help but feel the very good happiness that comes from my music every time she releases new content and I'm always looking forward to every other new releases. And for the questions, I would like to know what are the other projects we should be expecting after Queen Don't Come EP? And for the second one, would there be any African tour as time goes on, which, um, of course, after the U.S. tour, which is currently going on. Brilliant. That was, that was a brilliant video. Um, I like that he, he um, mentioned my last EP, mm -hmm. my most recent EP, which is called Queen Noncom. Well, to answer your question, Samuel, if you're watching right now, um, actually, I'm on my American tour, which is for my, my, my most recent album, which is called Empress. Um, DC had its um, tour two days ago, and I'm moving on to New York and Houston. As far as an African tour, that would be after COVID season. I really need COVID world to be over. So let's say maybe mm -hmm. 2022 by God's grace. And there will be always more music and collaborations with people over here in America Ooh, and outside. Uh, with so many collaboration questions. All right, let me, let Ooh, me go okay. through some of them. Okay. Uh, uh, collaboration questions on YouTube and then on Twitter here. Wow. So Ivan says, working with artists from other countries, how has the experience helped your craft? Hmm. Think about that, and let me just share a couple more. Hmm. Um, are you going to work with official Niniola? Oh, I got that question a few days ago as well. Oh, uh, what about a collaboration with Thames, another very Ooh, up there Nigerian yes, yes, artist? Yes, 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 uh, yes. How about Ethiopian collaborations? People want to know who are you going to work with next? What can you share? What excites me the most about this question is yeah. that you're mentioning female artists. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Um, this female's Thames, um, Niniola, they've worked so hard and they're working so hard and I'm so happy to see them where they are right now. We are working on things that I can't really share right now. Oh, okay. A little, little, tiny, little, little tiny collaboration. I've said enough to... already. No, you've said nothing already. I, I have. Okay, now I'm going to move on to Ethiopia. Okay. Um, about Ethiopia, mm -hmm. uh, I actually, my recent video, which is for my song, Sweetie, was shot in Ethiopia and Namibia. Ah, um, so I'm very yeah. conversant with the people and I, I can't wait to make it finally happen. I haven't done a collaboration, but I'm working on that. But I picked one word from Ethiopia. Namaseganala. That means thank you. I, uh, when I went to see you on, on Saturday, you broke into a South London accent. Which is my accent. <laughs> it, was it was so good. I know you speak multiple languages. Yes. Would you like to do a little bit of South London, please? 
I said, thing with South London um, accents that sometimes I just do it. But you know, when I see the authentic South London accent, which is you, sometimes my accent just has to sound a bit, you know, off. I'm not so sure. Am I doing well? You're doing really I'm well. Doing well. It's oh kind God, of scary. Mom, I made it. You know, cause my mom sent me to a British school. <gasps> a British school is actually in Nigeria. It's called British um, Saint Saviour's British School. Yeah. So I, I think maybe, maybe just maybe, I got some accent from there. What do you think? You're just brilliant. You're even saying oh. think with an F. Girl! <laughs> well, you think. Which is my major <laughs> embarrassment in life. All right, so one more thing, one more video for you, and this one comes from John Byrne, who has a question for you. John, fire away, right. go ahead. Your music, as you say in your Africa song, at this point your music is known all over the world, in New York, in Chicago, in London where I am, in Africa, and, and you're known for your incredible work rate. You constantly are putting out new music, you're doing collaborations with people, you're putting out videos that have amazing visuals and production design, um, you're an ambassador for various good causes around the world, and you also are one of the um, music celebrities who keeps in real contact with fans, with your Instagrams and, and, and your social media. So my question to you is, in the middle of doing all of these many projects, um, how does Yemi rest? Uh, what does Yemi do to rest? Uh, and do you find that taking time out is helpful in planning the next project? Look, Femia, I feel very close to tears. I feel like I just saw a family member right now because literally John Bryan on Twitter is always tweeting and retweeting my, my music, my posts. He showed me so much love and it just really warms my heart to, to watch him and listen to him. So thank you for this. Thank you so much for You're this. You're so welcome. Yo, and he's right. He really cares for him to think about how uh -huh. I rest, for him to want to know, Yemi, do, do you rest? Do you even rest? Well, I started resting last year by force when COVID sent me home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, force rest. All right, by the, force. this is your day off. So this is how you rest to answer, John. So I'm going to get mm. you to do one more, one more number for us to play us out. Oh, look at that, Femi. He's just talking about rest and you're sending me back to the stage. Yeah, I'm sending you back to work. Uh, what are you going to play to play us out? To play us out on a good note, I would love to perform this song. It's called Africa. It's a song that reminds me about home. It's evergreen and it's actually my favorite. Yes, All I get right. to have it. Go, go play your favorite song. See ya. While Yemi goes to get ready, uh, let me tell you where you can see her next if you're following the Empress USA tour. <laughs> October the 6th. Have a look here on my laptop. She'll be performing in New York, so you will see Yemi there. And then also, right now, you are about to hear Jerry on guitar, Joseph on drums, and Yemi Alade bringing us Africa. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Why? It's an African one. Yay! Yeah.
an African one. Get that me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>